أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد يقول الله تعالى في القرآن العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإنك لعلى خلق عظيم صدق الله العظيم All praises are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We glorify him and we thank him for his blessings and favors upon us I testify that there is none to be worshipped but Allah. He is alone and he has no partner. And I testify that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is his servant and final messenger. Ibadallah, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ And indeed, verily, you are of an exalted nature, exalted character. This was Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he reminded us that part or of his mission was to make sure that the teachings of uh, morality, the way we behave, the way we conduct ourselves was prevalent in the community. And so he said to them, إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ لِأُتَمِّمَ مَكَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ Verily, I have been sent to perfect good behavior. This was Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, we live at a time when we are experiencing a lot of violence in the homes, domestic violence. Sometimes when we hear about domestic violence, we think about uh, violence against women in particular. When we hear about spousal abuse, we think about uh, abuse with regards to women. Today, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, I, I want for us to look at this very seriously. Because violence in the homes have really destroyed families, it has destroyed lives. We are being reminded in the Quran about the foundation of marital relationship or spousal relationship. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in the Quran wa min ayatihi an khalaqa lakum min anfusikum azwajan litaskunu ilayha wa ja'ala bainakum mawaddatan wa rahma inna fi dhalika la ayatin liqawmi yatafakkarun and from among his signs, from among the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he has created for you from among yourselves spouses so that you may dwell with them in peace and tranquility. There must be happiness, love, that peaceful environment and it is he Allah who has set between you love and compassion verily in that are signs for those who reflect and, and so the foundation of the relationship of husband and wife it, it is for that establishment of an environment in which there is peace and love, there is compassion, that you, you dwell in, in, a, in an atmosphere in which there is, you're helping to inculcate or to make sure that there is happiness. But we see something totally different in our society that we live in today. We see in that environment that sometimes wives are being abused and there are violent acts committed against them. We, we see in that environment sometimes husbands are being abused. And sometimes husbands, because of them thinking that they're macho and uh, because of their self-esteem and honor, sometimes they don't say anything. And quite often, we don't hear about the male being abused. We always hear about the female being abused. Again, it's because of that honor and prestige. Sometimes men do not say that. What? Your wife is abusing you? Your wife is violent against you? They don't want hear people to hear that. But my dear brothers and my dear sisters, statistics are there in many of the agencies to show that there are many men, there are many husbands who are being abused by their wives as well as wives being abused by their husbands. That does not create that happiness, that comfortable, that loving environment. There are children who come from those relationships and sometimes they are being abused and they are being treated violently in the homes. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to address this anytime he was told about situations especially where women were being abused he would address it and he will tell the people to stop doing it he, he was an example of love and compassion making sure that the, the the home was a loving home a peaceful home a home in which people want to be there there are homes today where people don't want 
that they, they, they feel stifled. In the, and they feel that uh, they should not be there. Sometimes when they're out of their homes, they, they, there is more comfort and happiness and peacefulness than when they enter into their homes. And it shouldn't be like that. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Khairukum, khairukum li ahlihi. The best of you are those who are best to their families. You treat them well. And so he said also, Wa ana khairukum li ahli. And I am the best to my family. This was Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. People need to understand that the same, you, you sometimes when we are with community, we want people to see us as role models, as the best human being. And when we step back into the four walls of our homes, we are sometimes real animals. We don't know how to communicate, we don't know how to speak, we don't know how to talk to one another. And then the stress level becomes very high. When the stress level becomes high and people get frustrated, when frustration kicks in, you don't know what else will happen. And so often we have heard of people taking their lives because of what they have gone through. Or other people, people taking the lives of others because of how much uh, the, the type of uh, treatment that they got from them and they couldn't take it anymore. This is what we are being faced with in this society that we live in, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. And you may be wondering, why is he talking to us about this? Don't wonder, because Muslims are not immune. And we see it very often in the Muslim community. There are women who call wives and they are so frustrated they don't have an opening. Where should I go? And because sometimes men think that because talaq, divorce is in their hands that they have an upper hand over the women. And so they say, you can't go, I wouldn't give you money, I wouldn't give you this, I wouldn't give you that, you can't leave me. And so she has to stay there and uh, be a victim of abuse, being called names, and sometimes being shoved and hit. And then there are other times that we have men who would say the same thing. Let, let us remember, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, that Allah listens to the dua, the prayer of the oppressed. And when someone is oppressed, and that person calls upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you don't know what may come your way. So we need to be very careful as to how we treat one another. It is important that we work hard to build strong, loving families. It is important that we strive to make sure that Islam 
is reflected in our behavior and in our character. When you treat people the wrong way, you are helping to create or to magnify that disaster. What will happen? You will perhaps have a wife who will cut off relationship with you, or a husband who will cut off relationship with you, or children who will cut off relationship with you because of the violence, because of the treatment, the ill treatment. And when they cut off relationship, it is possible also that they may lose their Islam. Because if they see you as role model and they see this type of behavior coming from you, they will wonder what is it that this religion that I'm following? Why am I part of this religion or this way of life where people behave in this way? And there is a possibility of you losing them to something else. So my dear brothers and my dear sisters, we need to have control and make sure that we don't treat people in that way where we are shoving them, pushing them, being degrading them. Sometimes you, you want to get at the individual and you destroy the valuables of the individual. It is important that we do not hurt our loved ones because when that hurt comes from people whom you care for and you love it is it has a greater effect on the individual if someone just passes by and hurt you or say something that you did not like it is not the same as when your loved ones, they call you names or they hit you or they, it, they do something wrong to you. It, it is not only about physical violence, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. It's not only about physical abuse. It's also about emotional abuse. And, and when someone is abused emotionally, the, the spirit of that person is broken. There is the feelings of helplessness in the, the feelings that there is no hope, I have lost all hope. And, and emotional abuse, it, it puts you in that state of that you are being oppressed. And we, and we need to be very careful of not oppressing people. Emotional abuse makes you, your, your self-esteem being lowered. When people are being abused emotionally, it's like a degrading of their self-esteem. Sometimes you, you just call people names. Husbands say some things to their wives' names in a very derogatory way. Didn't touch, didn't, didn't do anything else, but 
you can't do this right. You're so stupid. You're this, you're that. You know, only a few nights ago, a sister called and she was saying, it's not about hitting. It's not about uh, shoving. It's not about, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the physical abuse. It, it's about the verbal abuse. That I have lost all self-esteem because of the way I am being treated. And so, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, we, we need to try everything that we can try to make sure that we avoid this type of violence and, and spousal abuse, children abuse, domestic violence. And in some culture, it is like it is, a, it is permissible. In some cultures, in Muslim environment, in Muslim culture, sometimes it's permissible. They think that it's okay for me to do this. But it's not okay. Islam does not allow it. And so we need to make sure, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, that we, we build our Iman in, in order to strength to, to avoid it, we strive to build our Iman, our faith. If we have good faith, strong faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will not uh, to do the things that other people do in terms of uh, this type of violence and abuse. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he gave a lot of examples. If we look at his life, look at him as a husband, and you will see how much he tried to help at home. The Prophet of Allah, he was mending his own clothes. He had chores that he took care of in his home. The Prophet of Allah, he was kind to his grandsons. They were climbing on his back as he was praying. Love, the compassion, the kindness. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, in order to avoid this type of Behavior, we need to also make sure that we prepare people for marriage. What is expected out of your relationship? We need to counsel people and let them develop certain skills. If we don't teach them expectations, then we are preparing them for disaster. And so many couples have had disaster at the very beginning of their marriage. Counseling should be, and the skills that they develop should help them to ensure that there is a violence-free family life. We need to make sure that there is available resources in our community. Our problem today is that everybody wants to do everything we have resources but we all want to do everything we don't channel our resources in such a way that uh, we do not deplete it every single organization every masjid wants to do duplicate everything that everyone else is doing 
and then we do it in a small scale and then it dies away. There should be anger management. People do get angry. Wasn't there a man who came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said, Ya Rasulallah, counsel me. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, La taghdab. Don't be angry. And he thought, well, well, I know that. That's okay. Tell me something else. And the Prophet repeated it. Don't be angry. Uh, how many Muslims today, they do get angry, they do get violent, they do say things that they, they ought not to say, and then they don't want to sit with anyone to discuss it. We need to be able to communicate well, and so we, we need to teach people communication skills. Children should be able to come to their parents to say whatever they want to say to them. Don't shut them out. Listen to them. Don't talk at them, but talk with them. They need help. You can probably, by communicating well, be able to take them away from some of the things that they may be contemplating doing. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, we, we need to, to manage our stress. So there should be stress management. You think about it. How many professionals do we have in our communities that can really provide such services? You may go to a non-Muslim and he may give you or she may give you advice that sometimes it is not in accordance with the, the, the laws of Allah and the traditions of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So just, just don't make your children doctors and engineers. Let them become counselors. Let them be able to provide services that the Muslim community needs. That's the only way we'll be able to gather, make sure that we have that happy, comfortable, peaceful family. That people know that they have some way that they can go, they can talk to someone. Decision making, problem solving skills. People sometimes just go on the, at the spur of the moment or whatever comes to their mind. Perhaps if you talk to someone who has that skill, who has that know-how, that person will help you. And so my dear brothers and my dear sisters, this is just a tip of it, but I wanted to bring it to your attention because of how much it is becoming prevalent in our Muslim communities, in our Muslim homes, where indeed, yes, there is domestic violence in Muslim homes. And when we talk about spousal abuse, yes, there is spousal abuse, not only abuse to women, but abuse to men, not only abuse to wives, but abuse to husbands. And yes, there is abuse to children. There are so many Muslim children who have been taken away from their families and they are with social services. Muslim children, because of what happens in the homes. You may leave here today and say, well, he didn't tell us about Salah and Zakah and Saum, and he didn't tell us 
But take this seriously, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, because it needs to be told that yes, we do have a problem like others, and there are people who are suffering in their homes, but they have no outlet. And sometimes they end up doing things to themselves that is totally contrary to what Allah has taught us and what his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us good in this life and good in the life hereafter. And may he save us from the torment of hellfire. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfiru Allah li wa lakum. Wa li sa'ir al-mu'min al-mu'minat min kulli dhamb. Fa astaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim. الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين بدوان الله عليهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد my dear brothers and my dear sisters Allah tells us about our relationship and He says والمؤمنون والمؤمنات بعدهم أولياء بعد يأمرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر ويقيمون الصلاة ويؤتون الزكاة ويطيعون الله ورسوله أولئك سيرحمهم الله. The believing men and the believing women, they are helpers unto one another. They enjoin right and they forbid evil. They establish prayers. They give in charity. And they obey Allah and obey His Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Ulaika sayyirhamahumullah. Those believing men and believing women, Allah subhanahu wa taala will have mercy upon them. He will give them, show them that compassion, that rahma. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, we we need to act now to make sure that we help to eliminate domestic violence, spousal abuse, children abuse in the homes of Muslims as well as non-Muslims. There are times when people need help. They need to be separated. And so those who are establishing shelters for women and children, we need to support them, we need to help them. We need to make sure that we create, we help to create safe and protected environment for people if they are in an environment that is not safe. We, as we move people into different environments, to, we also need to focus on preventative education that we educate people so that they can prevent such type of violence and such type of acts in, in homes. We do have a crisis and we need to intervene. And so we need to help to make sure that Islamic social services are available for those who are in need. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, go back home, read up on violence, domestic violence, read up about spousal abuse and children abuse, and look at the statistics, and you would see that yes, it is climbing day after day and that Muslims they are not immune that Muslims also have this type of behavior in their homes we need to help to ensure that we educate people 
and we help to, uh, to eradicate this type of behavior from our society. We don't want to lose our children, our families. When people see we behave in certain way, they don't want to have any con contact with us. They want to disconnect from us. If this is the way Muslims behave, I don't want to be Muslim. Have you heard that before? Yes, Muslims have said that before. And so they disassociate themselves from the Muslims. Let us strive to make sure that we live with morals and characteristics and behavior that was taught to us by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Don't think that you are a good believer when you do the wrong thing. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "La yu'minu ahadukum." None of you is a true believer. You are not a good believer. You are not a strong believer. You have deficiencies in your faith if, you, if your total life is not in inclination with what I brought. Don't use the things that Allah has given you. Allah has given you certain rights, responsibilities, don't use it to abuse your power and to treat people the way that you would not like to be treated. Do as Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَخَالِقِ nas bi khuluqin hasanin And treat people well, treat people the way that you would like to be treated. Whether they are your, your, your husbands, your wives, your children, your grandchildren, or whether they are strangers, always treat people the way that you would like to be treated. If we adopt that type of principle, then there will be peaceful homes, there will be happy homes, comfortable homes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. May He guide us, may He give us good in this life and good in the life hereafter. And may He save us from the torment of hellfire. لَقَدْ أَمَرْنَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَ فِي الْقُرْآنِ الْعَظِيمِ حَيْثُ قَالْ إِنَّ اللَّهُ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يَصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِي يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وأرضى اللهم من خلفائه الأربعة أبي بكر وأمر وثمان وعلي ونستة الباقين المبشرين بالجنة ونسائر الصحابة ونتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان لا يوم الدين اللهم عز إسلام والمسلمين اللهم نور قلوبنا بنور الإيمان وثبت قلوبنا على دين الإسلام ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم اللهم لا تدع لنا في مقامنا هذا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هما إلا فرجته ولا هاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة إلا قديتها ولا مريضا إلا شفيت ولا ميتا إلا رحمت ولا دينا إلا قديت اللهم تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم عباد الله إن الله يمر بالأدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض كم لا لكم تذكرون فذكر الله لا نعمه وشكره على آلائه ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تسنون أقم الصلاة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر